Ethiopia is the cradle of humankind. Throughout the country, traces of early civilizations stand witness to its ancient history. Ethiopia is now a country on a fast track to renaissance. Resurrecting the illustrious name and reputation it enjoyed in ancient times. It's home to many nations and nationalities, all with their own unique cultural values. Ethiopia's linguistic, cultural and religious diversity remains a source of the country's unity. Addis Ababa is the diplomatic capital of Africa, the seat of the African Union, the Economic Commission for Africa, and many other continental and international institutions. Ethiopia's rich resource base offers opportunities not only to its own population, but also to other citizens of our world. The Danakil Depression, situated 125 meters below sea level, and Ras Dashen, Africa's fourth highest mountain at 4,620 meters, demonstrate Ethiopia's enormous geological and natural diversity. The country has 18 major agroecologies and an additional 49 ecosystems, all suitable for farming. This is one illustration of Ethiopia's huge natural resource potential still largely unexploited. The agricultural sector is essentially Ethiopia's economic backbone. Its fertile soils and diverse ecosystems allow the cultivation a great variety of crops, flowers, fruits, vegetables, cereals, coffee, tea, spices, sugar, cotton, oil seeds and rubber, and for activities such as animal husbandry and fishing. Ethiopia is a predominantly agriculture producing country, so it was not hard to look around and see what is the best opportunity to maximize return on investment and also to take advantage of the uh, proximity of Ethiopia to the global markets. This country is a uh, land of hope and opportunity uh, because especially in the agriculture sector, its contribution to the foreign earning of the country is uh, above 85%. Uh, Ethiopia has got a lot of development capacity in agriculture field because you have so much land which is not cultivated, and you have resources also, irrigation resources also, water also. Rainwater is quite good. An investor can, can uh, invest in different uh, agroecologic areas in line with its uh, felt need. For many years, coffee has been the country's major foreign currency earner. It covers more than 600,000 hectares of land. International demand for organic coffee, grown without fertilizers or other chemical inputs, is on the increase. And most of Ethiopia's coffee production is organic. As with its coffee, Ethiopia has a favorable environment for tea and spice production. Ethiopian tea is gaining a reputation internationally for quality, 
and the opportunities for tea cultivation are attracting investors. In recent years, Ethiopian spices have also attracted attention in global markets. In particular, there is a high demand for black pepper, turmeric and cardamom, which grow in lowland and rainy areas of the country. In the past, cereals and oil seeds were cultivated mainly for local consumption. But now, commercial farms are cultivating haricot beans, soya beans, sesame and niger seeds for export. Ethiopian sesame in particular is in high demand internationally and has proved a lucrative area for investors. For example, in 2008 and 2009, the country exported 287,000 tons of sesame, earning 356 million US dollars. This amounted to 24% of Ethiopia's foreign currency earnings for that period. The company or the investor there, he has uh, chosen this place because the main production here is sesame seed. It can mainly go up to the end of the season. It is very attractive, it is good. Currently, there is growing interest in rice cultivation and soya bean development in different regions of the country. This is the first country where we have started our operations overseas. Here we have come in basically for edible oils, especially soya bean. So far we have developed uh, about 12 million hectares of land, but the uh, potential arable land is uh, nearly 70 million hectares. So one can imagine the huge potential in terms of arable land that the country has. To this end, we have already identified nearly 3 million hectares of land uh, and prepared it for uh, potential foreign and local investors. Large-scale farming is one huge potential for foreign and local investors because, uh, as I've mentioned, there is large arable land that can be developed. Uh, infrastructure is uh, uh, being developed to those areas. Uh, this will uh, make easier uh, the access of these lowland uh, areas. And there is an enabling situation to develop those lands currently. So this is one area. The second one is horticulture. Especially, we have uh, fast-growing uh, floriculture industry in this country. The potential of this sector has been ignored for years. Now it is one of the most dynamic and profitable sectors of all, providing great opportunities for investors. For investors from Europe, the Middle East and the Far East, Ethiopia has become the destination of choice when it comes to growing flowers, vegetables and fruits. Horticulture in Ethiopia is, is a natural process. 
the natural elements that are here, the microclimate of the area, the soil, availability of water, and most importantly, a very plentiful supply of well-educated and uh, available human resource. This was a good opportunity to take advantage of all of these elements that make it possible to succeed in horticulture. For a grower like me, it's, uh, it's heaven on earth. The beauty of this country is that there are so many different climate zones and a very stable climate. Because of that you can produce all year around. And that is more or less unique in the world. There are only a few countries in the world where you can produce all year around quality products. There was no you know, known flower exporter before 10 years in Ethiopia. But now the sector uh, fed more than 1.2 billion US dollars in total in the last you know, decade. Uh, this shows uh, the government intervention you know, in availing different incentives for this sector. So horticulture in general, fruits, vegetable and flower is a huge potential in this, in this country. Ethiopian Airlines has become a source of pride to the nation and a crucial pillar of support for investors through the efficient delivery of freshly picked flowers to European markets. Ethiopia is the richest country in Africa when it comes to livestock resources, though still has a long way to go in terms of fully harnessing its potential in this area. We have huge population. We always say we are first in, in Africa, but uh, this sector is not well developed. So this is by itself a potential for both local and foreign investors to invest in livestock. The private investors who are engaged in meat and dairy processing are optimistic about the future. The share of the manufacturing sector in the country's economy is on the increase. In 2010 and 2011, the sector's contribution to GDP was 13.4%. The agro-processing sector has not been progressing in a manner that adds value. This has been acknowledged by the government and particular emphasis has been given to this sector in the Growth and Transformation Plan. In an effort to transform the country's economy from agriculture-led to industry-led, the government has given particular attention to sectors such as textiles and garments, leather and leather products, metals and associated industries, and cement production. We are uh, making in uh, textile in local market and also export, export in US. This fabric is a very good thing. 
ግሪን ተብሎ እቃችን ሲወጣና ሲገባ ሳይፈተሽ ነው የሚገባውም የሚወጣውም ይሄ ፕሪቪሌጅ ነው በዚህ ደረጃ መታመን እንምንችልበት ሀገር ላይ አለ ኢንቨስትመንት ኢንቫይሮንመንት ኢዝ ቱ ጉድ ቢኮዝ ዚስ ካንትሪ ኢዝ ሎ ኢን ኦርደር ኖ ፕሮብለም people are is cooperative and too many opportunities there are so many supports and services provided by the government institutions so we try to avail quality services and infrastructures we've already invested 50 million dollars and we are in the process of investing much more to expand the capacity and therefore expand our footprint in Ethiopia. The investment climate in Ethiopia is very attractive. Uh, if you look at a number of uh, macroeconomic indicators, whether it's the population of Ethiopia being second largest country in Africa. Uh, as I speak now, there are around 21 million uh, people going to primary and secondary school. That's the future for this country and a very cheap rate for uh, these companies. It makes them by far come to death. You know, middle class is growing. Um, you know, work creation is uh, improving year on year. Uh, added to that is the whole infrastructural development of the government, whether it's in terms of housing, infrastructure. I think all that creates a huge uh, opportunity for foreign investors like ourselves. Uh, sugarcane project is a good project and uh, there is good opportunity here in uh, Ethiopia so that way there is good profit margin here. Since this country is more peaceful so working here is more peaceful. That's a very important thing for an investor because they are going to invest their money. We identify and plan to have in four locations uh, the industrial zone developments. Basically, Bolilamid, the first one, we will find these completed uh, manufacturing sheds and additional more around 15, 16 are also under construction uh, on the second phase. And there are some to be earmarked for future uh, construction like the Akaki Kilinto, uh, Dredawa, Kombolcha industrial zone development sites. This by itself shows uh, the commitment of the government uh, to make you know, investment uh, smooth in this country. These industrial zones have got uh, major facilities like uh, access road, electricity, uh, telephone lines, um, storage and the like, including uh, office spaces for the would-be investors. Ethiopia is also rich in surface and ground mineral resources, still largely unexploited. Geological surveys indicate that there are huge reserves of gold, tantalum, platinum, nickel, iron ore, potash and other valuable minerals. Ethiopia, the water tower of Africa, has a hydropower generating potential of about 45,000 megawatts. Many hydropower projects, including the Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam, are progressing well in an effort to meeting the power demand of the fast-growing industrial sector. The power sector is also open for investors. Ethiopia is undergoing a construction revolution. The road network is undergoing substantial expansion, both in rural and urban areas.
railway construction is also given emphasis in the growth and transformation plan as it plays a crucial role in accelerating the country's economic growth. In addition to the railway connecting Ethiopia with Djibouti, other railway lines stretching for over 2,400 kilometers in different parts of the country are already in the pipeline. The other untapped investment potential in Ethiopia is in the service sector. There are plentiful opportunities in health and education provision and in hotel and resort development for local and foreign investors and for investors from the Ethiopian diaspora. Um, uh, I'm a nephrology and hematology nurse, registered nurse in the U.S. So I just came in my born country in Ethiopia. I just started investment, which I know, which I practiced the last 15 years. Really, every day I save so many lives. For investors and tourists alike, Ethiopia offers enormous variety. I'm surprised that I didn't know more about this place. It has some incredible sights. It's very different. It's like nothing I've ever really seen before. The culture was very, very high in this area of Africa long years ago, no? centuries ago. I was very surprised. Before, I have not seen this part of Africa. It recently gained an additional UNESCO World Heritage Award, its 10th. The Ethiopian government is committed to eliminating obstacles and bottlenecks for those coming to invest and do business in the country, and is engaged in a process of refining its policies and strategies meet the demands and interests of the business sector, whether local, foreign, or from the Ethiopian diaspora. I say perfect and very good. Everything they settle and they try to assist us. That's why it is very easy to come in here to invest what I say. To get a license and everything is very easy. There are some uh, amendments on the uh, proclamations and regulations uh, to make them more competitive. Uh, to provide more incentives, uh, to make it more accessible, uh, and on top of that, to create a one-stop shop for investors. So we are now serving as the main source of FDI, actual inflow record. Ethiopia, with its untapped service and ground resources, really is the land of opportunities. Whatever brings you to Ethiopia, whether business or tourism, the warm welcome afforded by its hospitable people will make your stay a memorable one. Have a wonderful journey to Ethiopia.